Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Reading Romans chapter 6, verses 12 through, I believe, 23. Here we go. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey? His servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Can't do it without him. All right, it pats two cents. Can't do it without him now. Can't even do it. I don't care how good you think you are. All right. Now, this is what I love about what God requires. If I ask you, this is an example, you know, I go into my little analogies. If I ask you to go to the car, start my car up. If I order you to go to my car, start my car up and warm up the engine because it's winter time and it's cold. Well, how are you going to do that? First, if I am reasonable and I am fair, I have to give you the keys to my car. You can't start my car up without trying to hot wire or do something crazy for me to make it easy for you to do what I told you to do. I have to give you the key. Can't do it without the key. When God requires righteousness, he's given us the key, the Holy Spirit. Can't do it without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us a new nature. See, our old nature, the Bible says we were born and shaped in iniquity, which means it comes natural to want to do wrong. It comes natural to want to have sex out of wedlock. You get horny, you want to do something about it? Let's get it on. All right? You get angry, you want to go and slap somebody, whoops, upside the head. I said, whoops, upside the head. You want to get your your jollies off because you're ticked off. Somebody offended you. Well, you're going to get them up in public, and you're going to get them told, and you've got all the cuss words lined up just for them. And you cuss them out. You put them in their place. You could give a flying, you know the term. Mm -hmm. So, or you just get off in their behinds and start duking away. Because you're in your flesh, it comes natural. Your natural fleshly impulses normally are negative. Think about it. Spite, anger, strife, lust, <laughs> control domination, being domineering, hmm? Hmm? abusiveness, think about it, manipulation, you say this, hopefully it'll make them do that, you pay this, hopefully it'll make them dance to your melody, you butter them up and, and flatter them, 
Hopefully you've got them wrapped around your finger. We don't realize how the flesh operates. The flesh is very subtle. Very subtle. You know, when God talks about the flesh, he's not just talking about smoking cigarettes, drinking, screwing around, and, and, and f fighting and brawling. There are the subtleties of the heart. The Bible says the heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? But see, here's what happens. When you are, I got to go back to this word. When you are free from righteousness, that means you are dead to Christ. You are dead to holiness. When it says the wages of sin is death, things die in you that connect you to God. They begin to dwindle, die, and wither. Not because you messed up once or twice. Not because you had an uh-oh moment, whoops. No, I'm talking about willful, deliberate, scheming, manipulative. I got this one. I want this one to do that. Uh -huh. It's called operating under the spirit of seduction. And it's also intertwined with the spirit of witchcraft. Rebellion is as witchcraft. You hear what I'm saying? When you insist on having things your way, when you insist on acting the way you want to act when you want to act it, when you insist on, on behaving and saying the things that you just want to say what you want to say, you grown, you pay your way. The Bible says you are bought with a price. You are not your own. So all those rights that you have to sin, <coughs> excuse me, and act in a, a behind and, and act in a fool out in public and drama over here, drama over there, drama everywhere. I said drama over here, drama over there, drama everywhere, drama, 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 and it's all about me. Flesh. Flesh. Flesh is subtle. Flesh is subtle. I'm going to give you some quick examples of how subtle flesh is. This is when you know you're all about me. Me, myself, and I. You doing good? Oh, I didn't know that your daughter had been in a car accident. Really? Oh, I hope she's okay. Oh, I remember when I was in a car accident. Boy, I tell you, I went through so, and then you got an hour of me, 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 me. What happened to me? How I felt, how it affected me, how I got depressed about it, how I got frustrated, the money I lost, how they sued me, uh, me, 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 me. You forgot all about it. his daughter. She's in the hospital. Self-centeredness, selfishness. You see what I'm talking about? I call it meism. <laughs> That's my new word for the dictionary. Meism. Me, 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 me. The world revolves around me. We don't even see it in ourselves. That's why those of you who think you're okay, I'm okay, you're okay, and everybody's okay. No, and that's not okay. Because when God looks at the heart, see, man looks at the outward appearance. You dress nice, you have a pretty smile. Ding! So everybody thinks you're such a wonderful person. But God looks at the heart. Oh, he's jealous of her. He and his jealousy is going to cost her her job by him undermining what she does on the job. Why? Because he is jealous of her, not because she's not doing a good job, but because of the sins of the heart. 
That's how we slide into the works of the flesh. And that's how we begin to die to holiness. Because then, the more we do that, the more we lean to our own understanding, the more we yield to the works of the flesh, we end up dying to the things of righteousness. We end up not caring anymore. See, righteousness involves love. When you love, you are more concerned with how your actions will affect the other person. Not all about how their actions are going to affect you. Get you out the doggone picture. Think about someone else for a change. Now, listen. I do counseling. I want to say this before Satan attacks. I am not throwing bricks. This has nothing to do. This is coming to me from God. I am not reflecting on the people that I counsel. So do not take this personally. I rebuke that crap in the name of Jesus. What I'm trying to share, a lot of us in this world walking, trying to walk after the spirit are so unaware of the subtle tricks of the flesh. So we have to be made aware. If I see that your pants are split in the back, I need to make you aware of it. Nine times out of ten, you didn't know it or else you would not have put those pants on. That's what I'm doing. That's how we help each other. God says he sheds light in the darkness. When you turn the light on, the roaches flee. I'm turning the light on so that our physical fleshly roaches flee from our character. If we want to grow, we have to take it. We have to receive words of correction, of admonishment. Do you understand? We have to rebuke. We have to give correction. We have to enlighten. Be Make people aware. You'd be surprised. You know, I used to watch my mother. Let's, let's keep it in my family. I used to watch my mother. And in the house, thank you, Lord. Wow, that just came to my memory. So, okay, in the house, now, my mother was legally blind, but she could see. She could write, she could read, she could see a spot on the floor, but she was legally blind. Now, there are many forms, excuse me, of blindness, you know, besides 100%. Now, she would sit there with me and my father, and we would be playing Scrabble or watching a program or whatever, eating dinner. And mama did fine. She get up, she had to go to the restroom. She gets up, she goes to the restroom. She comes back. She didn't get lost. She goes right to the dining room table. She's fine. But don't let us have company. Now the flesh starts creeping into the picture, into the scenario. We have company now. And yes, my mother was a manipulator, a master manipulator. So I recognize it every time I see it. Well, most of the time. Now, here she is sitting at the dining room table. And she has guests sitting around as she holds court. And she's having a ball. She had this bubbly personality and really, really wonderful, you know, people person. People gravitated to her. But they didn't know the subtleties of my mother's flesh. So here they are watching my mother. And as she excuses herself to get up and go to the restroom, what does she reach for? She reaches for her, she's patting around, reaching for her white cane. My sister and I are trying so hard not to crack up laughing because she never needs the white cane unless she has company. So she puts on the show. She picks up the white cane. 
And then she opens it and she's patting herself. She gets up and she's feeling around and she's got this very pitiful look on her face. I am telling you, we don't see ourselves. If I told my mother she did it, she would be highly offended. Probably tell me F you <laughs> in, in the literal words. But we saw it. It was obvious to us. That's what I mean when I say how the heart is deceitfully wicked. Deceitfully wicked. We don't see ourselves. We don't understand what makes us tick from one moment to the next. Are we seeking attention? Do we need praise? Do we need approval? Do we want somebody to do what we want them to do? Do we want control? Do we want drama? Do we want you to feel guilty? What you did tell me. I mean, I'm serious. The flesh is a trick. We have to laugh at it. But we don't have to obey it. Now, so she would pat around and go to the restroom. And she'd come back. Now, she <laughs> I'm not making fun of my mother. I'm making fun of the flesh and how we all fall for, fall for it. She wouldn't have known she was doing it, but here she's got this company and she needs attention. So she's seeking for pity and all of that. So she comes back and she's feeling around the table, feeling for the chair so she can sit down without falling. And my sister and I just want to get out of the house because we were, sometimes we would go sit in the car and just, what was that about? You have got to be kidding me. That white cane never comes out unless she's got company. What is it you pull out? What is it you pull out of your bag of tricks when you're presenting yourself to someone to impress, to whatever in the public's eye? To a person you barely know and, and you want them to think this, that, and the other about you. So you get on stage, you put on your costume, and you take on the character. You play the role. Yeah. The flash, baby. The flash is a big, fat, phony. But the flesh will tell you the truth about yourself if you watch it. If you really want to know, you really want to grow, check yourself out through the eyes of God. Compared to the word of God and through the Holy Spirit, you will see your silliness. You will see your sin. But you can't see it if you're caught up in me, myself, and I. And you're looking in the mirror. So pretty, I feel pretty, I feel pretty and witty and bright. Oh, so pretty that I hardly can believe my sight. Do, 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 do. While well, everybody else is saying, She's so ugly, so controlling. Oh, the drama, oh, mama, please stop. I'm serious. Ask God to show you yourself and you will grow. You will only grow if you want to grow. And you will only know if you follow on in righteousness to know. God bless you.